It's time for our Bible lesson, our gospel lesson, and our Bible truth today, boys and girls. So I am so glad you're joining me for Time for Truth, and I want you to get your Bibles, because we're going to learn a Bible truth out of there, and we're going to be in Acts chapter 26 today. Acts chapter 26, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, the fifth book of the New Testament. And so I want you to get your Bibles ready and I want you to follow along. And today we're going to be talking about a man and we're going to be talking about how he gave his life story. And it's, I'm going to talk to you about how he did that. His life story. We should all be giving our story to people. And we're going to find out how Paul from the Bible, gave his life story to a king. He had give, went to Jerusalem, how he was in prison, and how he gave his life story. Boys and girls, he did it this way, and we're going to find out that Paul gave his life story before he knew the Lord, how he became to know Jesus Christ as his Savior, know he was going to heaven, and what his life was like now. And boys and girls, we need to be giving our life story, our life gospel story. And so I want you to turn in chapter 26 and we're going to start in verse 1. It says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak. Paul was brought up from prison. He had been in prison in Rome. And he had been in prison for a lot of years. He was shifted from Jerusalem to Rome. And the reason he was in is because the Jews hated what he was saying. They didn't want them to talk about Jesus. He didn't want him to talk about his life story, about how God had changed his life. And so the, prison, the soldier brought him before the king. And King Agrippa... Here he is. He was sitting there. King Agrippa was sitting and his queen, Bernice, the Bible says her name was, Bernice was sitting there and a man named Festus that was thoroughly disgusted with Paul that had a part in him being arrested. And so Festus was sitting back off and you've got King Agrippa and his wife Bernice, and here's Paul. And so all these people are listening. And let's find out what happens. The Bible says, and then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. He was able to speak to the king for himself because back then, boys and girls, you couldn't just speak to anybody. The king had to let you speak. And so Agrippa said, Paul, I want you to speak for yourself. And this is what Paul said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. He says, I get a chance to tell you, and I'm so happy of what I've been accused of and why that I have been thrown in prison for years. And we go down to where Paul starts telling his life story. He used, boys and girls, this opportunity to tell King Agrippa about Jesus, about the gospel. And we're going to find out how he did it. He's going to tell, the very first thing is, before he knew Jesus Christ as his Savior. And so the Bible says in verse 5, which knew me from the beginning. He said, King Agrippa, people that knew me from the beginning... If they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. He goes, I was just like Festus. I was just like him. I was a Pharisee. I was a person that was a religious leader. I knew the word and the scrolls better than anybody. I studied them from a young boy. And the Bible says, that he says, now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God for our fathers. He says, I'm before you saying this because God has told me to tell you this. 
And verse 10 says, Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Paul said, Guess what, King Agrippa? Queen Bernice? I used to persecute Christians, people that were giving the gospel. I used to punish them and shut them up in prison, just like I've been put in prison for the same thing. He said, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. He would whip them and beat them and Paul would beat Christians just for loving God and talking about him. And boys and girls, that's the way Paul was before he knew Jesus. What was your life like before you got saved? Maybe you were mean. Maybe you were telling lies. Maybe different things. But God changed Paul's life. And if you have a life story, a gospel story, God's changed your life too. So Paul goes on to testify. And now, boys and girls, remember... All these people do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They aren't going to heaven when they die. They've heard about it. They've heard about the Bible, but they haven't. So King Agrippa is listening very contently. See how he has his hand under his chin? He's listening very, very carefully because he knows there's something to what Paul's saying. So now Paul tells him how he got saved. Are you ready? The Bible says, he says, whereupon... As I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard to kick against the pricks. And you know what, boys and girls? Paul said, I was on my way on the Dama to Damascus, on the way to Damascus, and I had Christians that I was going to take so they would be imprisoned and they would be beaten and some of them killed because they were spreading that Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, came to die on the cross pay for our sins, and that he could forgive sins. And we thought that was heresy. We thought that was such a lie. I was very deceived, but guess what? I was bringing them to be beat and killed for even saying that they had asked Jesus to forgive them of their sins. And guess what, King Agrippa? In verse 15, it says, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Paul said, God himself, this bright light came down. It blinded me. And I cried out, who are you? Who are you, Lord? Who are you? And he said, I am Jesus that thou persecutest. See, Paul knew at that moment, that when he beat those Christians and he threw them in jail and took them to cities to be persecuted, he wasn't after that person. He was after God himself. Paul was after God himself. Now, this is before he got saved, but he met Jesus on the road and he realized that just like we realize that all of a sudden we're sinners. We've sinned against God. We can't get to heaven on our own. And Paul says, Jesus said to him, why thou persecutest me? And it says, the Lord said to him, but rise and stand at thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and the, those things in which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn from their darkness to light 
and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them are sanctified by faith that is in me. And you know what, boys and girls? God himself said, Paul, and Paul's telling Agrippa this, and he's saying, Agrippa, God said himself, I have appointed you. I want you to obey me. I want you to know that I am God and that I can forgive you of your sins and what you've done in the past. And I want to see other people come to know me because it's the only way they can go to heaven. And the Bible says that God said, I want you to go to the Gentiles to open their eyes. And it says to turn them from darkness to light. Do you know what that's what happens, King Agrippa? That's what Paul was telling him. He says, when you accept Jesus Christ, when you admit you're a sinner, believe Jesus Christ died on a cross to pay for your sins, and he rose again, and you choose him, and you say, I want that free gift, Jesus Christ will come inside and live within you. And King Agrippa, he will change your life. And then Paul said to King Agrippa, now let me tell you how, what my life is like now. And the Bible says in verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He says, I obeyed God. I asked him to forgive me of my sins. I had to do that myself, King Agrippa. No one could do that for me. No one can do it for you. You have to do it yourself. But showed first unto them the, of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do the works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Paul says to Agrippa, because I told you the same story, because I told you what Jesus Christ did for me and can do for you, that's the reason the Jews have put me in prison for the last two to three years. And guess what, King Agrippa? It's true. That's the reason. That's what I've been accused of. And the Bible says in verse 24, And as he spake for himself, as Paul spake to Agrippa, Festus with a loud voice said, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learned doth thee mad. He says, he speaks up and he's mad. Look at him. He's mad. And he says, you're crazy for what you say is blaspheming and heresy. And you are crazy. You're mad. You're cuckoo. That's what the Bible said that Festus said. And in verse 25, he said, Paul said to him, but I, Festus, I am not mad. I am not crazy, he says, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth, King Agrippa. I'm telling you the truth, Festus. I'm telling you the absolute truth. God is real. He changed my life. He wants to change yours, but you have to ask him to forgive you of your sins. Believe he died on a cross and paid for your sins and rose again. And you have to choose him. And then Paul looked at King Agrippa and he said this one thing. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. He says, I know that you believe that Jesus is real. I know that you believe the prophets and what God's done and the men of God through the years. You've seen it, King Agrippa. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would God, not that only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I except these bonds. He said, King Agrippa, God sent me to tell you this. And King Agrippa, the most saddest thing, that's one of the most saddest things said in the Bible, is King Agrippa said, Paul, you almost persuaded me. Almost. Boys and girls, unless King Agrippa 
ask Jesus later on. The Bible doesn't say, but King Agrippa is in hell today, and he's saying, I almost believed. And you know what? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, the Bible says for all of sin, sin is doing something wrong against God. And if the wages for that sin, the payment for that sin, is total separation from God, because there's no sin allowed in heaven. None. And you have to admit to God himself, Talk to him. God will hear you and admit to him that you are a sinner and you can't get to heaven on your own. And do you believe that Jesus Christ came and died and paid the price on the cross? And the reason he did that, he was born in a manger, boys and girls, to come and die on a cross because shedding of innocent blood is the only thing that would forgive sins. And he was perfect because he was God in the flesh. And boys and girls, he rose from the dead, and he's back in heaven today. And all you have to do is ask him to forgive you of your sins and that you believe he did that for you. And say, Lord, I want that. Just like Paul said, God, Jesus, I want that. And God changed his life just like that. And one day, boys and girls, we're going to see Paul when he's in heaven and guess what? He told his life story over and over and over again. Will you tell your life story this week? And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, get saved today. And boys and girls, I want to challenge you to give your life story. Can you write down what your life was before you trusted Christ, maybe you can't because you haven't done it yet. But if you trust Christ today, you can say what your life was before because God will change your life. You're a new creature. That means a new person. You're different because God came to live within you and you are going to be in heaven forever when we leave this earth. What you were before you trusted Christ, and ask him to forgive you of your sins. How you got saved? Was it by your mom and dad? Was it in a church service? Was it a friend? Was it reading your Bible? And then what is your life like now? Are you giving the gospel? Are you reading the Bible? Are you praying and speaking to God? And are you reading your Bible and letting God speak to you? Boys and girls, you can win your families and friends to Christ. I want to challenge you to give your life story today. Till next week.